So we want to classify a 3D object. But how exactly do we do that? And how different it is from a 2D object classification? Unless you completely agree with Elon Musk who said LiDAR is a fool's errand and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed, then this video is for you. First, let's go over 2D classification super quickly. In 2D vision, an image is represented as a matrix or a tensor. You may know how classification is performed in 2D vision. A very popular method is CNN, Convolutional Neural Network. From this 2D image, we can simply learn features through convolution operation and introduce nonlinearity through activation functions such as ReLU. Then pooling can be used to reduce dimensionality and preserve spatial invariance. This portion is called feature learning. The convolution layer and pooling layer generate high-level features of the input image. Then fully connected layers use these features for classifying the input image. The output layer produces the probability for each class. The class with the highest probability is the predicted class for the input image. In this example, it's a sweater with 99% probability. This portion is called classification. So what do you do when you have a 3D input? This is also a sweater, but it's a 3D point cloud. How is the data represented at the input level? How are features learned? And how is classification performed? To answer all these questions, I'm going to go over PointNet, a very popular method for 3D object classification that has more than 5,000 citations. A group of researchers from Stanford University proposed this method. I'll share the paper link in the video description. I'll explain the concept first. Then I will discuss the PointNet implementation side by side with the PointNet architecture figure for a better understanding. We initially start with a point cloud that has n numbers of points in it. A point cloud is basically a collection of individual points in 3D space. Each point is represented by its coordinate in the XYZ plane. That's why the input size is n by 3 here. In this particular paper, n is 1024. In other words, the input object that we want to classify has 1024 points. Then the input points are transformed by a input transformer network. Let's take a closer look at the input transformer. The main idea behind this transformer network is to align the input point cloud to a canonical space. So why do we need to do this alignment? The answer is in the definition of a point cloud. A point cloud is simply just a set of points in 3D space and therefore invariant to permutations of its members. Researchers have been handling this issue in several different ways. Like sort the input points into a canonical order. Sequential model, like train RNN model that considers input points as a sequence. Or use a symmetric function to aggregate the information from each point. This paper uses the last technique. Since we want the point cloud to be invariant of certain geometric transformations such as the rigid transformation like reflection, rotation and translation, an affine transformation is applied to the input point coordinates to accomplish this alignment. Here, the Tnet is used to predict the transformation. Tnet stands for transformer network. Tnet is basically a mini point net which is composed of basic modules of point independent feature extraction max pooling and fully connected layers. And the Tnet is trained with the rest of the network. I will show the exact Tnet architecture in the implementation section. For point cloud, a geometric transformation is just matrix multiplication. So here basically the input data is multiplied with the output matrix from Tnet. Then each point is embedded by a multi-layer perception. Here, the numbers in the bracket are layer sizes. Batch normalization is used with ReLU. I will share each layer details in the implementation section. Subsequently, a feature transformation is applied. Like the input transform, the feature transform is used to align points in embedding space. However, the feature transform is slightly different than the input transform. The feature transform does the embeddings in much higher dimensions, 64 in this case. This makes the optimization much more difficult. That's why a regularization term is added to the soft training loss to make the optimization stable. Here, A is the feature alignment matrix predicted by the Tnet and I is the identity matrix. 
then each point is again transformed in another embedding space which is a 1024 dimensional space this has been done by a multi-layer perception of sizes 64 128 and 1024 after that max pooling is used to aggregate all points in the high dimensional embedding space to output a global feature vector the authors experimented with other symmetry operations like average pooling and attention based weighted sum and found out that max pooling works significantly better. Finally, the global vector is updated by multi-layer perception to output the classification scores for k classes. The class with the highest probability is the predicted class for the input point cloud. Now let's take a look at the PyTorch implementation side by side to the point net architecture. I like this particular PyTorch implementation by Phasia22. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. This is very simple and easy to follow. If you are a more of a TensorFlow person, then check out the GitHub repo by the authors. I'm going to provide both PyTorch and TensorFlow implementation links in the description below. You will find instructions on how to train the network here. Let's check out the model script. This block of code is the TNet in input transformation. It contains three convolution operations followed by batch normalization and ReLU. Then the max pooling is applied. Finally, there are three fully connected layers. The matrix is initialized as an identity matrix. The output matrix has a dimension of 3 by 3. Next, this block of code is the TNet in feature transformation. It's the same as the previous block except the output is 64 by 64. The matrix is also initialized as an identity. Then this class is called pointnet feature that combines everything from the input layer to global feature. It starts with the tnet in input transform, then here is the matrix multiplication. The input data is multiplied by the output matrix of tnet. This is the feature special transformer network. Then here is the matrix multiplication of the feature transformer. This is the global feature. Finally, this point net classification class combines everything and completes the architecture. So far, we have till global feature. This portion is the final multi-layer perception and output, which contains three fully connected layers, batch normalization, ReLU, and dropout layers. Finally, the log softmax function is used to get the classification probabilities for K classes. This class is for object segmentation, which we do not need for classification. That's it. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or suggestions. If you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one.